Leah McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Guys, I have the juiciest interview with Troy Jensen. He is the makeup artist, photographer, image maker that worked with Erica Jane before she was on The Housewife. Wives, and he has such a great perspective and so much scoop to share. This is the first interview that he's done about this, and I'm excited to have it. And he's a great person. Before we get to that, let's just do a couple hot topics. Hope you guys had a great Labor Day weekend. Gretchen Carlson will be the new host of The View. She is taking the place of Meghan McCain. She worked on Fox News, and at that time, of course, Fox News was conservative. You really know her because she was the first person to really um, expose Roger Ailes with her own lawsuit of sexual harassment from him. She's been on Juicy Scoop before. I did her show, uh, her podcast. She has a book that I was featured in about my situation with Podcast One. And now she's on The View and I'm really excited for her. I think that she's going to have a great perspective. I think it, um, she might have come some conservative leanings, but I think then there's this also this side of her where she's really like a warrior for women in the workplace. So I think that was a great choice. I'm excited to see it. Now that I'm, you know, in her wheelhouse, maybe she will help me get on The View at some point since I've never been on it in all these years. Been pitched many, many times. Don't know why, but hey, it's, there's always a new day, right? For new days and new trials, well, finally the trial is happening for the founder, Elizabeth. She's the founder of Theran Theranos. Okay, this was Elizabeth Holmes. You remember this documentary, blonde girl, red lipstick, black turtleneck. She was this 19-year-old genius, self-proclaimed entrepreneur genius that dropped out of Stanford because she's like, I figured out this way of taking a droplet of blood and instead of getting vials and vials of blood and putting it through a litany of tests, we were going to get all these tests done in one shot of blood. Imagine, and her, the, the documentary would featured featured her, how she got all these investors to give her all these millions and millions of dollars was she like lowered her voice. It's this is not even her real voice. So people are saying, are we going to hear her real voice during this trial that's starting? They're just starting to get the jury together now because she is up for fraud because the thing didn't work. No, this, this idea did not work. You can't just get all these tests with one blood, drop, drop a little blood. It would have been a great idea, which is why people were sold that it was worth $9 billion. So all those investors are out. All these other companies that participated are out. And it was fraudulent. And there's, I guess they're going to prove that she knew it was fraudulent. She and her former boyfriend um, are both on trial for it, but not together. She senses given birth to a child. I think she's with her partner. I don't know what she's living off of. Um, but she is facing 20 years in prison, maximum of, meaning that's the most she could get, and $3 million in fines. Prediction. I think she will do time, but I think she'll do five years or less. And probably will get like four or five and then get out in like 25 months. Um, I think they're going to take pity on her because she's a woman and she's a mother. And... People didn't die in this fraudulent thing. And the people that lost their money were investors, not like what we're going to talk about, um, like Tom Girardi's victims, you know? So I think, I think when people look at the victims of it, they're like, yeah, you did something wrong, but, you know, it, it wasn't elderly people or orphans and burn victims. And so we'll see. Um, but I think that'll be really juicy. I know there's some scripted shows in the works. Um, with people playing her. I wish, I think I've heard a few different actresses that I think are working on playing her, which that'll be really interesting if it comes out while this is currently on trial in real life. I don't know why they didn't pick me because I loved doing her where she'd be like, like, <laughs> you know, was like sitting like a man, like wide legged and be like, hi. So imagine in this tiny droplet, this little vial could save your uncle's life. That's right. It's unbelievable. I haven't done it in a long time. It's probably not that great, but um, it'll just, like I said, I can't wait. I hope she goes on the stand, and it'll be very interesting if she no longer has that deep voice. It's so weird that people can change their voice for years, like Paris Hilton, this girl, and then just, like, go and then just stop it one day. Just so weird. Um, also, Catherine Dennis, I thought this was kind of sad. Um, 
It is sad, but it's sort of interesting. Catherine Dennis, I didn't realize, doesn't have custody of her children right now. They gave it. Catherine Dennis is the beautiful redhead. She was very young, had two kids with her reality co-star uh, about in the show Southern Charm from Bravo. His name's Thomas Ravenel. He'd run for, um, so I, I don't know if it was a senator, but he was, you know, from this really wealthy family. There was this Ravenel Bridges, this and that. When they got together and had these kids, they never got married. She was like early 20s and he was pushing 50. He since had a child with someone else and now he has custody of her kids because I guess he claimed in court or they had some type of evidence or the judge is seeing it that thinking that the kids are not okay with her when she's alone. Um, she has struggled with drugs and alcohol. Very sad. But now she only can see her kids every other weekend and it has to be supervised. Also, she look, doesn't look like herself at all. Everybody's face is turning like each other's. A lot of people think it's the filler, it's the lips, it's the nose, it's all these different like procedures with injectables. I think it's that, but I also think it's the big dark eyebrows. I think that really changes people's looks, but it also makes them all look the same. And she's not even blonde, uh, redhead anymore. She's blonde with black eyebrows. So it's just, I mean, I think it would be hard to recognize her if you saw her on the street. Um, this is kind of interesting. Pink um, E! News is reporting on this. She said about there's this 14-year-old girl that's huge on YouTube and Instagram. She's funny. She does all these pranks and challenges. She has 8 million subscribers on YouTube, 5 million on Instagram. And Pink did um, some type of interview, and she said, how many kids are like Piper Rock L are being exploited by their parents? And at what point do the rest of us say this isn't okay? I guess there was a bikini shot of this 14-year-old girl in which the mom took the photo. Um, it's not like she's on OnlyFans. She can wear a bikini. There's other kids putting bikini photos on. I, I don't know. I kind of think it's a very interesting discussion because if you're – the daughter, the girl said, is mad that Pink said that. She's like, has Pink ever even seen any of my, like, viral videos? This isn't what I'm about. I had a dream and an aspiration. I had the, a mom that were, was able to support me and facilitate that dream. Now, we look back at child stars like Britney Spears and all these other people and on these Nickelodeon shows and the Dan Schneider shows and, you know, putting them on a TV show where they're forced to, you know, be responsible for the entire cast of the Miley Cyrus show. That's a lot more pressure to me, I think, than being a YouTuber and having your parents help you out. So which parent is worse? Like, th at least this way, the kid doesn't want to do it. They don't, they don't have to do it. The network isn't screaming at them. They're not shoving coffee in front of Miley Cyrus's face, making her feel like if you don't, you know, perform, look, all these people won't have jobs. This audio guy will lose his house. I mean, at least it's not that kind of pressure. And um, so I think it's just kind of an interesting discussion. If your kid really wants to be in this business, would you rather encourage them to try to do it on their own with YouTube and Instagram and TikTok? Or do you want them working for like a Dan Schneider? I don't know. So kind of interesting. Anyway, you guys, what's even more interesting is my interview with Troy Jensen. So much juice. He's never done an interview like this before. What a life he's led and what scoop he has. And here we are with Troy Jensen. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I am here with my now friend. He is the infamous Troy Jensen. <laughs> he is photographer, image maker, hair, makeup, to the stars, has worked with Myself, Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson, Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton, Erica Jane, give me another few other names. Salma Hayek, Gwyneth Paltrow, Diana Ross, Farrah Fawcett. Jeez. The list goes on and on. The list goes on I've and been on. Around. <laughs> I met you socially um, through some friends a while yeah. ago. Through our real housewives from Calabasas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Talk about putting things out in the universe. I was like, I need new photos. I want new photos for my tour. And I'm like, but I don't even know where to begin. I wish someone would just present themselves. I swear to God. Wow. And I'm in Miami and you DM'd me. And you're like, when are we going to shoot together? Yeah. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So we did the shoot of all the photos that you're seeing. Um, I have a photo right here in the studio that you can see that you just presented to me. I'm so yeah. excited to frame it. And you put a a crystal on my diamond, my actual diamond <laughs> ring. So it, it's bigger than I think my actual ring. I hey, love it so I much. And um, build gonna, it, they will come. Yes, and I and we're gonna get into 
everything about your career and everything, but you were recently, um, people were made aware of you again with your connection to Erica Jane, yeah. Radar Online, wrote an article because we now know we have these lists of everybody that was paid from the Erica Jane LLC, also the American Express card that had 14 million, and your name was on it. Yeah. And you, know, you called me because I've been like, <laughs> tell me when you're ready to talk, Troy. And you're like, well, I guess I'm ready to talk now because I'm out there because you've been telling me a lot of juice as you contoured my cheeks, yeah. fluffed my hair, lit my It's photos. hard to talk to you without <laughs> contouring your cheeks. I feel like I should have a makeup brush here. And I, I always do my like, best oh my chat. God, there's so much juice, so much juice. But I was like, I don't know what he can say. So I'm... Look, it's out now. It's out, yeah. I'm surprised, actually, that I'm, I'm that high on the list because I worked with her 10 years ago. Right. So let's and, talk about how you yeah. met her and because this was before Housewives. So Yes. This was before she was a housewife. Yes. Um, I actually met her 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I did her makeup for her family portrait. Um, I was working with a photographer by the name of Matthew Ralston, and he said, "Do you want to do this 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 gig with me over the weekend? I'm shooting this this attorney and his wife, and for you know their 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 yearly Christmas card, Christmas card yeah. or whatever it was used for." And I said, "Sure." So that's how I first met Erica. So that if that was 20 years ago, like they were just newlyweds, really pretty new. I didn't know how if, yeah. how long they were together. How old but... was the son? He was a boy. He was, you know, uh, I want to say maybe around uh, tw maybe 12, 13, 14. Oh, okay. There, you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And what was your impression then? Well, she was very different than she is now, obviously. I mean, mm. She was like that, the sweet, you know, wife, you know, she's very conservative looking. Dressed conservatively. Very conservative. Her hair was like to here. It was like perfectly. Just above, the, just past the yeah. shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Very conservative. Nothing was... Even the way she dressed, nothing was overly sexy or she was very conservative, very pretty. Very much playing the attorney's wife yeah, role. Playing yeah, playing the, the attorney wife, yeah. Yeah. And so then after that shoot, then how did you come into play into the Erica Jane singing life? Well, um, I was working with the Pussycat Dolls and I'd been working with them since the beginning. So I did a lot of work with Robin Anton, who was working uh, with her, I guess, a protege or whatever, with Mikey Minden mm -hmm. uh, on a lot of the choreography stuff. And so that's kind of how I met him. And he introduced me to Erica. I said, you want to work with her? And showed me some pictures and a, a video that they did. And I just said, you know, sh it's they're try she's it's a little too copy of the Pussycat Dolls. I'm not so really into I it. So I want to show you that photo. So let's, let's remove that. Mike, bye. Let's move her. Hey. Move her to the... To my little bungalow Just in Hancock now. Park. Just um, okay, we have uh, lots of interesting things to talk about, but I want to just show. So I want to say this is all. I didn't do that. Th this is all, um, these screenshots and the information I'm going to share comes from a great Instagram account. I've talked about her a lot, The Talk of Shame. Okay, and okay. she put this on her stories over the weekend, and thank God I grabbed it before it was gone. Here is a very old video of Erica Jane. Now, that is not your work. No. Thank this is before I met her. <laughs> so, yeah, I saw this video and I just thought it was a little, you know, too much like the Pussycat doll. She was in like almost like a the same corset, type of like corset. A cor like oh, the bustier corset, yeah. little booty shorts. Yeah. I watched the, this video because yeah. it was on her stories. And, I mean, it was so cheesy. So it was basically she's at a strip club and all these like guys in suits are like, and the song was something about like, you know, turning on men and money and, you know, so she was a stripper that all these guys adored. Very much like Madonna's, you know, um, where she's in the pink dress and all the men, are, material world. It oh, was right, very right, right. much a rip off of yeah, material yeah, yeah. world. I mean, yeah. she's kind of well, ripping she off loved, all these people. She loved Madonna. Okay. Well, she who doesn't? Was, yeah, yeah, she loved Madonna. But, um, no, I saw that and I was like, mm, I'm not really into it. And they're like, well, listen, if you work with her, you can do whatever you want with her. You know, and I said, really? OK. So, I mean, when I got her, I like bleached her. I wanted to sort of like wipe the slate clean of the housewife and this Pussycat doll thing Even that they were trying to do. Even though she wasn't a housewife yet. Right. But she had that image of a Pasadena housewife. Right, right. Okay. And yeah. so I kind of wanted to just kind of strip it uh -huh. and just and do something a little edgier with her. Mm -hmm. So I like bleached her brows. And, you know, on the cover of her first record, I, I shot Pretty Mess. She's wearing like a crop T-shirt and like little shorts. I mean, nothing 
expensive, nothing fa fashion. It was just so, so, so simple. Um, and, you know, and you wanted to do that because you were telling me like you wanted it to be like, she's a real artist. She's got some yeah. edge to her. She's right. got some, you know. Well, you know, there's a lot of her music, too, that I really liked. But it wasn't, it. you know, you know, I think Mikey saw her a certain way and I mm -hmm. saw her a certain way. And that's kind of um, was an issue. And, you know, uh, I wish that we had more communication at the time. We didn't. I just sort of felt very slighted and disrespected. So, but I From wasn't Mikey. just her. I I'm, wasn't just her makeup artist. Right. I did. I oversaw pretty much everything creative. Her, her hair and makeup at the time, uh, photography. I was overseeing the development of her, of her website, her merch, designing her T-shirt art, her, even her logo that she still uses today. You know the, the yeah. signature. You know? Yeah. So you know I oversaw all that. Because that's what I was brought in to do, image. You know, yeah. it wasn't just her makeup artist. So, you know. And when um, when you say you like the music, did any of it, she like sit down with songwriters or did was all the songs like presented to her and then she well, got in the studio and sang it? I, you know, I don't know her, her what if she, what, how much she wrote or whatever. I think she did probably the lyrics and she brought in like somebody to do the beats or the music and she probably did the lyrics, uh, the, the, the words, whatever. But she, um, you know, there's a lot of her music. I saw her sort of like a Kylie Minogue, uh -huh. you know, and um, I think I think Mikey's uh, idea of her was to be more of a caricature, mm -hmm. more, you know, sort of like a Nicki Minaj, you know, where it's just you're not it's sort of like a well, I mean, he calls her like a hooker Barbie, whatever. That's yeah. his words, not mine. And I just saw her as, you know, I thought she was beautiful. And there was a lot of her music that I did like. It wasn't um, the the campy kind of messaging, you know. Like, that is now. Get, that it yeah. is now. It yeah. was just really beautiful songs with great melodies and great beats. And, you know, I think she was working at the time with Peter Rafelson, who, who produced and wrote Open Your Heart with Madonna in the 80s. Oh, yeah. So he... he so she, yeah. Speaking of hooker Barbies, um, <laughs> I... I have the Barbies here. Good. At pre-request. I mean, you know, and during the quarantine, this this is what made me laugh during during some, you know, a very bleak, bleak moment, you know, really? in the world. Really? You know? Really, Troy? <laughs> really? You come here on fucking Juicy Scoop. <laughs> Thanks for the loyalty, bitch. Um, <laughs> we worked together. I paid you well. I was generous. And, or what, Sutton? <laughs> and then I have Sutton here. She's been the voice of reason lately. Or what, Erica? Or what? <laughs> Look at this dress. These girls That's will be making um, several appearances throughout today's uh, interview. My favorite, Garcelle. I've worked with Garcelle. Ever, She's amazing. You told me Garcelle's your favorite. I, I She is. I mean. She's just so down to earth and classy. And what a gorgeous face to work beautiful, on. beautiful, yeah. I've known her for a long time. Well, thanks. Yeah. She's always just like. <laughs> I love her because she's just like, just this reaction's like, mm. she's like, mm, okay, Erica. Mm. Um, so I, and you know, I saw, I seen a side of her that I didn't think that was her personality to be that kind of bold. Yeah. And, and to, and to come for those ladies. Yeah. You know, it's she's always very kind of sweet and, you know, so I'm like impressed with her, you know. Well, here's uh, Lisa, Lisa Renna. Renna. And you know what? I have taken. <laughs> some shit this season, I'll tell you, Troy. And, you know, Erica's my friend. And, you know, they say innocent until proven guilty. But then the attorney's like, no, not when it's a civil case. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> you're not on trial for murder. Like, it's a different kind of thing. Anyway, let's get back to all of this. So you're working on all, all of this stuff. And I want to go back to some of the stuff uh, that was found out this weekend, as I said, from Talk of Shame. So this was really interesting because I, when you walked in, I said... Do you know Jerry Heller? And you go, why is that name familiar? Mm -hmm. So what they discovered was Jerry Heller is the character that was in Straight Outta Compton. He was kind of the shady character that fucked over uh, NWA. Wow. Anyway, Gerald Hel Heller is listed as a payee of EG Global. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this is Jerry Heller. And then Gary uh, B Ballin is his cousin. And he also is listed on there. Mm -hmm. And so Gary Ballard, this is such a, a genius thing, had like a Tumblr account in 2008 that was uncovered where he basically talks about working with Erica Jane 
in 2008. And that's when you worked with her. Mm -hmm. So they, cause you were like, oh wait, yeah, they were tour managers. So they became tour managers and he brought, he claims to have brought in Mikey because he knew his mother from the temple, mm -hmm. from a, a very prominent LA temple. I didn't and, know that. Yeah. And he said he was a great, he was working with the Pussycat Dolls and he said, meet this girl, Erica Jane, that I, he, they had already been brought in, meet this girl, Erica Jane, they had coffee, and the rest is history. And he goes on to say, um, it "Let's that said, Mikey." Oh, and then he, he wrote, he wrote. Okay, so they, I set up a meeting in a coffee shop in Studio City, and the rest is history. Especially for Mikey, he has been with Erica now for eight years, and has also direct. Okay, so this, this, he's talking about his time Tell in two thousand and eight, but this was written in two thousand and sixteen. Oh, so he wrote okay. this blog okay. in two thousand sixteen about this time of two thousand eight. Yeah. And he said, has now been working with Erica for eight years and has also directed some of her videos and is a close friend and advisor. He's probably made millions of dollars. Why since hasn't he starting... on the list? I don't know. He must be that unknown 1.4 million. <laughs> I would think, if not more. Yeah, I would think more, yeah. I mean, working, with, uh, working for Erica, you're welcome, Mikey. Did I mention... Okay, this is his blog. Did I mention how well everyone got paid? All by Erica's billionaire husband, Tom Girardi. Whatever we needed, we he provided. Be it staff, travel, costumes, makeup, whatever. Tom gladly paid to keep the show rolling smoothly and keep Erica happy. Most of the shows were pretty interesting. Sometimes hundreds of gay dudes dancing with their shirts off. Sometimes naked guys on the bar dancing. It was wild. We did about a 15-minute set. Pretty yeah. short yeah. for a performer, but Erica would sing to a track and do her hits, which they all knew she was a star in their world. <laughs> would you like to comment on if they all knew it? Uh, from what I remember, <laughs> Mikey, would get, <laughs> Mikey would get up on stage and say, and here's Erica Jane with her number one dance hit on the Billboard charts. And the, the we would be standing in the audience and the... the the gays would look at each other like, who is she? I have never heard of her. Yeah. <laughs> so I, Jarek and I knew her song by heart. We would be singing to it, but nobody else, I don't think anyone else knew who she was, you know? Well, I know from a friend of mine who's in the music industry that billboard charts is one of the, th the few things you can still basically buy. Right. Because there's no way to tell how many DJs are playing your uh, record at a nightclub, especially a gay club. So... To say a number one billboard hits means it's playing in a nightclub. So nobody right. knew what it was. Because that was always like, if she has all these hits and she's now on, um, you know, now on Real Housewives, why am I still not hearing It's Expensive to Be Me on 102.7 ever? Mm. I don't know. I've never heard it on a regular. I've never heard, I've never heard, I've never heard, heard one song on a regular. And I listen to like regular radio. Right. So, okay, moving on. First class all the way. We would travel first class all over the country to do a 15-minute show <laughs> that we didn't get paid for. Oh, that we didn't get paid for. Bizarre, but fun. The gay promoters, staff, and crowds were pretty easy to work with and generally very nice. Her backup dancers were the finest in the industry and all danced with major superstars. One day, Jerry wanted me to contact Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas to see if he would produce a song for Erica, and Jerry felt would take Erica Jane to the next level, which Jerry was good at. We worked with Will Adams at Ruthless Records, where he was called Will One X, and the group was called, oh, so this is Will I Am before, and his lawyer, Fred. Okay, it was a friend of mine. Sometimes, sometime in 2010, Jerry and Tom had a disagreement. Stop, Jerry and Tom Girardi. And Jerry left the project. That's his, this, that, Jerry is this guy's cousin. Jerry mm -hmm. is the guy that worked with um, NWA. I knew it was just a matter of time before I would be asked to leave. Eventually, I got the ax, but they paid me monthly for the next six months before the check stopped coming. Tom was very generous, and I really liked him. He was very nice and decent to me, as well as Erica. I watched a couple episodes of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and loved seeing Erica, and I'm glad her star keeps rising. I knew that one of her favorite songs was My Way, which ended up learn learning, and I play often well now. Okay, so then... Um, so then we see where some of this money has gone here um, on her card versus his. And then, okay, so we're going to get into the other people. But so now, 
So how many, how much, how many tours and things did you go on? What were some of the experiences you had? We went to every gay pride in the country. How many are there? Every major city, right? Uh, pretty every major city. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and she, how would she even get on that? I mean, that? I remember one time we were in New York yeah. and we got snowed in. Okay. Uh, we were supposed to go to like uh, Boston or something after that. And we got snowed in literally for a week in a fabulous hotel, mm -hmm. you know, just snowed in, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything. You know, money was no object. I mean, it, yeah. you know, she never asked for a discount. She never said, try, that's not my budget. I'm paying out of pocket, which is what they, you know, you'd normally hear. Yeah. It's like, no, what, what's your fee? That's it. And I got my checks. I didn't wait. And normally you wait like 30, 60 days. Right, yeah. I turn in my invoice on a Monday. I'd get paid by Wednesday, you know? And who was paying you? Where were the checks? The office, from? Tom's office. I wasn't paid out of this EG Global thing. Okay. I was paid from Tom's office. And So uh, this was before, you know? I was, again, I, I haven't worked with her. I haven't seen her in a decade. Right. And so... Um, so what about, how did you feel about their relationship and observing them? Hot and heavy? No. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't keep their hands off each other on the yeah, private yeah. chat? Um, we couldn't keep our hands off of Erica. No, um, to me, it, it was, you know, kind of like an arrangement, you know? Yeah. It was an arrangement, you know? So would, was he ever on the jet with you guys? Yeah, sometimes. Like may, very, very, very few times. A lot of times he would say, uh, I think he was coming in from somewhere and he would pick us up kind okay. of a thing, I think. Um, but, you know, he Hi, was. baby. You got the jet? He, he would he would Great. show up to the, yeah. you know, like if we were in town, like we would go to the Abbey or yeah. um, whatever. She's the Rage. I remember one time we did something at Rage. And he would come and kind of like sit in the back, you know, and watch and then split. You know, we would all, you know. Would he come alone or would he bring his girlfriend? He would come alone. <laughs> he would come alone. I don't know. Maybe she was there. I don't know. Yeah. I, w I didn't know. You know, I didn't know who she was. But, I mean, I, I, I kind of. It's just interesting because you now it's out that yeah. he's a cheater. Yeah. Thanks that she's told us. But, I mean, I heard from someone years ago that knew his mistress that would do the mistress's hair. Um, mm. That Erica knew and was completely fine yeah. with it. Um, Eric even said on the show, oh, I used to have to go to Germany and all these places with Tom. But then when I started Erica Jane, I didn't. Yeah. So who was going with him? Right. I don't know how many girlfriends there are because I've heard there's the judge from the old Nokia text phone. There is this girl who he was recently photographed with yeah. having lunch. Yeah. That blonde apparently is the travel agent that is the or something like that, yeah. uh, 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 allegedly, who also went on all these big conventions with him, the yearly Vegas convention, and apparently Erica and her, and said, P there's people that said, no, he would like stand next to both of them. Well, it kind of makes sense. One is your assistant or someone who works for you, right? and then your wife. So I don't think he was presenting them as my wife and my mistress, but in fact, it was my wife and my mistress. Yeah. And I think she was like thrilled. What the fuck does she? Oh, I'm so jealous that you get to hop on Tom Girardi. Yeah. While I get to go on the private jet and dance with a bunch of hot gay guys. Like who the who else? What would you choose? Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I never did her makeup or got her ready for anything that she did with Tom. You know. Right. So I don't know if she. I mean, I would assume if she was going to go to a dinner or an event, whatever, she'd want her hair and makeup done, and she. I was doing everything else. Yeah. But I never got hired to to do anything like that. It right. was always for her music project, you know? Yes. So, she, she really had the best of the best, besides you. Yeah. She also had Steph, who was longtime assistant. That's after me. Yeah, oh, longtime assistant of Kim Kardashian. Yeah, that's after, that, and, she was hired after I, I left. And Steph came from a small town, was working at a gym, met a few people. Mm -hmm. And she's like, she wrote this article, or it's in this article, Steph's like, I never knew what a Range Rover was. It's just always interesting when people, um, to me, really have like their eyes on the prize yeah. financially. Yeah. And I just Why like never I? did. I, I ne never I, I did. I was never like that either. I never had the mom that was just like, these are the rich kids. We're mm -hmm. going to join, you know, this club so that you can meet yeah. the richest kids. My mom was just always like, make your own money, make it, you know, no one can take your education away from you. Yeah. And it's just such a different thing when 
some people, or like the kid that's just sitting in the small town was like, ooh, I'm gonna, you know, my goal is to yeah. have this much amount of money or whatever. Well, you know, it's just, it's you know, with, it's, with in, in my industry, you know, uh, it's, it's very powerful if you're able to command, you know, 5K a day mm -hmm. to do hair and makeup or to right. do just makeup. You know, there's very few people that can command that when, you know, in my heyday, I mean, I still command a great, a great paycheck, but you know, in the, in the 90s, in the beginning of the millennium, you know, I was, I was sort of at the peak of my career. I was doing, you know, uh, Salma Hayek, Gwyneth Paltrow. I was working with brands. I was doing a lot of great, amazing work. And then I met Kim Kardashian and that was sort of the beginning of, of social media and so I saw this this kind of flux of, of attention uh, for a, a reality star. So mm -hmm. I saw the the sort of the you know that there is a, mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunity with that. And at the time, you know, it it kind of goes to your head that kind of exposure. You yeah. Know? That kind of you know, like I've worked with Diana Ross, Farrah Fawcett, Catherine Deneuve, amazing people. I never got that. I never got death threats because I was working with them. I never got like inundated with hundreds of emails from women all over the world that want to work with me. I got so that after working. Some people loved you and was like, "Oh my God, you're working with Kim Kardashian. Can you right. do for her what for me what you right. did for her?" And then other exactly. people were like, "I hate her so much there because she is this polarizing character." Therefore, we hate you. Right. And, you know, I had a lot of, of stalkers. I had people come into my life who were like friends just to get close to her. You know, remember when Courtney's um, that scandal with Courtney Kardashian about some model coming forward saying he was the baby daddy? Yes. That was somebody that, uh, that, was, that I was hanging out with. He was staying at my house and he he never had a conversation with Courtney. And the tabloids would call and say, you know, I, I used him. He was a friend of my model staying with me. And so I said, I'm doing this shoot with Courtney. You can be the little boy toy today. So don't talk to her. Don't ask for an autograph. Don't ask for a picture. Just leave her alone. Don't talk to her. So we shot. And then those pictures s surfaced. And the tabloids want to use them. I was like, hell no, you're not going to use them. I was like, why are you running this story? It's a lie. It's not so true. So they just saw the story together. And then someone just created the story. They, don't, they never saw them together. They were no, never they saw together. together in the photo. In, the, in my photo. In the right, right. Photo. In my photo. Like they met. He came with, with this whole story. But the tabloids are like, why are you why are you posting this? This is like bullshit. So was the model did, did the model create the story or did the someone model else created the model oh, created the it. one who lied? Yeah. And then and then I kicked him out of my house because I caught him watching Kim Kardashian's sex tape on my computer. I was like, she's like a sister to me. You got to go. <laughs> oh my God. You gotta go. Oh I kicked him. God. I kicked him out, and then he tried to sell the story to the tabloids. That he was Mason's yeah. dad. Yeah, and then and Kim yeah. called me. I was actually in Miami with Erica. Yeah, we were sitting by the pool, and Erica. I mean, Kim calls me. Could you call your boyfriend and tell him to stop uh, talking to the press and saying he's Courtney's baby daddy? And I was like, What are you talking about? Yeah. And I was like, I got on the phone. You motherfucker! Like, what the fuck are you doing? And he hung up on me. And where is he now? I have no idea. No idea. So this, you know, that with a lot of notoriety and yeah. attention came this these morally corrupt people. Right. You know, and so I felt a lot of stress and pressure at the time. And then working with Erica, um, I look back, I'm thinking, why did you invest yourself so much with this woman? Like, I, I would never have done that now with someone the kind of the way I was involved with her I would never do it now and even though I was paid take really on well like one person like a, you're basically working for one person exactly versus many yeah, yeah yeah I alienated a lot of clients I, I you know because the money was so great yeah and I think and, that's why she pays you know, so much because and, she doesn't want to call you right and have you say oh I'm sorry I'm doing Heather McDonald's right. makeup now you're not yeah, yeah. baby get <laughs> right. over right get exactly. over to my dollhouse and why are you doing Park. that bitch you know? yeah right exactly so I mean, that's why you do pay a lot because yeah. it's like, no, you will be at my beck and call. Yeah, and and we were at yeah, her why, beck and call. Yeah, from, why wouldn't you be? Yeah, before, and, during, and after working with her, you know, uh, uh, Jarek was is who's on the list too. Yeah, that's who uh, you my work best, with. My best, my best friend, who's also my manager now. Yeah, but at the time he was my makeup assistant, and he would go back to the. We would all party at so whatever. Uh, Pride and yeah. Jarek would go back and take off Erica's makeup and hang out with her and you know they'd order food and we would be you know this is the best party and Erica's like Jarek would like you fuckers I want to have fun too I was like no, go back with Erica have fun 
<laughs> oh, so he was like the Cinderella. He was a Cinderella. And you were the evil He was a Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> you got to yeah. rip it in with the Pratt yeah. guys, and he was like taking out the hair. I literally, I think one time we literally went from the club to the plane, and we were trashed. Oh. Trashed. Literally from like, I, I almost didn't make it one time. So, I mean, that's a pretty great gig for a gig It was, guy. oh yeah, we were, we were, we were. I mean, all, it was like. We were all pretty messy. I mean, this is like a pretty great gig. It was a great gig. You're a gay single guy. And I was guy, also, you know, given a lot of creative. Yeah. I was given a lot of creative reign, which is, yeah. you know, amazing. And, you know, until, until, you know, Mikey wasn't cool with that. You know, Mikey saw her a different way. He wanted to sort of, you know, wrangle the control over her and what she was going to, what she was doing. And, you know, uh. I remember one time we were getting her ready for a, uh, she was going to show up to Rage to do, uh, here's my video, I hope you like it, that kind of thing, you know, and she just and wanted to look good. let's just be good. clear, Rage wasn't paying her $10,000 to show up. No, 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 no. All these prides no. were not paying No, her. she was showing there to promote her, to, to have So, like, these were not her paying single. gigs, yeah. not even for, like, a thousand bucks. No. For us? No, for oh. her. Like, oh, yeah. she was almost paying to perform. She was paying to perform. Yeah, yes. she was paying to play, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we get her ready. And I had brought in a hairdresser who now is still working with her. Clyde is still working with her. I and we Clyde did her. too, from the Clyde. Kardashians. Yeah. To work with the Clyde. Kardashians, yeah. yeah. And so he, we did her very sort of like disco 70s, Studio 54. She looked amazing. And Mikey walks in. He's like, you look old. You look old. You look terrible. You look old. And oh, I was God. like. Oh, my God. Right to her face? Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty horrible. And that was sort of like the, the beginning of the end for me because I started to shoot my mouth off to them and started standing up. And, you know, I, was, I felt very disrespected. And, you know, I mean, Clyde's still working with her, so yeah. go figure. But, you know, I try to well, stand up for it's a hard gig. Hey, listen. Yeah. I've, I've been in that position yeah. where I've worked no, with No, after that, I lost all my agency. They're still working with her. So nobody wanted to give up that Erica Jane money. You know, no. when you're when you're no one's going to stand up for you, mm -mm, no. maybe they'll text you later and be like, sorry about that, buddy. But they're not going to no. lose their position. Never got a text from anyone apologizing or yeah. even nothing. No. But, you know, I shot my mouth off and I was never hired. So what again. did you say? Well, let's hear the story. Come on. I need to role play. Were some gawked cocktails involved <laughs> I, I need a when shot. this happened? No, no. You know, it's uh, actually. Uh, I had had like a little procedure done, so and I was under a lot of medication, and and yeah. and, and and I was on on a steroid, which r made me literally crazy. Okay. And so I was calling, I was calling and te text Warren with pretty much everyone I knew. Like my friends were calling, like, "Is Troy okay?" Like he texted me in the middle of the night, "You fucking bitch." Well, <laughs> so, so so I some pain meds. So I I went on off off on her and Mikey calling. Mikey, a, a shady queen, and and I called her a wannabe pop star, and really, really try. <laughs> yes, and the I actually apologize. I apologize to... To, again to you, Erica. That was not cool. That was the not only nice. thing I ever wanted to do was to entertain. And I had a kick-ass checkbook. I had the best of the best. Mr. Girardi supported me until he didn't. I told you from the beginning. It's expensive to be me. <laughs> <laughs> so you. So then what did you say to her? Well, I, she wouldn't take my call, obviously. But I didn't even really, I didn't even really know what I was saying. Jarek was the one who went on my, on, you know, and, and erased all the, the messages and, and called her and says, you know, Troy's on this medication. He doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> you know, he's really sorry. And she was kind of like, oh, don't worry. It's okay. I understand. It's Whatever. all right, baby. And then never heard from her again. And I felt really, I felt bad because it's not my, it's not my, my 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 personality to to go off on anybody, you know, no matter what. Well, I'm and happy. I said some pretty horrible things, sir. You like, know, what? and so I. What else? Want to be pop star? What else? Uh, Say it. Say it to my face. Yeah. It's been ten years, Troy. Right. Say it to I my said face. I said you know you're a want to be pop star. You buy your way to the top, and you know. What 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 else did I say, Jarek? I don't remember. What other true things did you say? <laughs> And I called my, Mikey a shady queen. I've actually apologized to, to him to his face. He was like, okay, you think I'm a shady queen? I can accept that. Okay, I'm a shady queen. I'm like, yeah, you are. Well, in 2021, <laughs> I think your statements have been proven to be quite accurate. Um, okay, so, when, so um, what are some other things? You told me now they didn't seem in love. Did she ever seem like she might, she and Tom, 
not super sexual. Was there any other um, people you th- did she ever have a little uh, a little boyfriend? Oh God, you know what I I'd rather not comment on that. Uh, I take the fifth on that. Okay. You know she she did. You know I worked with her very closely, so I I you know I got to know her very well. Yeah. You know, and I got to know her and her and her her dynamic and you know this this project Erica Jane uh, was probably the most important thing to her more yeah. than more than uh, you know anything more than probably her marriage more than anything that she was doing this was her this is something i think she always wanted to do and you know for whatever reason tom gave her this opportunity with sparing no expense right right he gave her this opportunity and um and that's you know that's what she did and when um now, when you were working with her, how, Beverly Hills Housewife was on the air, but she, of course, wasn't on it yet. Yeah. She always said, at least she said in my interview, no, I never watched it. I only watched Law & Order. I had no <laughs> idea what Housewives were. I never saw it. Nothing until Yolanda told me. Yeah. Were you guys aware of Housewives when you were working together? You know, I do remember uh, a conversation, and I don't know if it was be- through her publicist or through her, where she had... It was brought up, and I I remember saying, "Don't do it." You know, you know they're, I mean, they have a way of like digging up things, and you know, so I do remember a conversation. I don't remember in what context it was or with 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 who. I think it was with her and the publicist, and I was, and I do remember saying, "Don't don't do it." But this was a, again before I knew she was gonna audition for it or meet with them or whatever. You know, yeah. plus she lived in Pasadena. She doesn't live in Beverly Hills. But you told me that she said, that's fine. I can buy a house in Beverly Hills. Right, right, right. Yeah, she got, I could relocate. I could get a house, whatever, yeah. So I think that's kind of interesting that she did have her eyes on that type of yeah. a prize. So I kind of, the, the point is, she hasn't been truthful. Not that you right. have to be untruthful right. on a podcast. You don't yeah. have to be truthful on my, as my guest. You don't have to be truthful on The Real Housewives and say that you're madly in love with your husband and you, you, you know, you bone him every night when you don't. Right. But I think now when she then says these truths of him, the car accident, the memory loss, and he was cheating on me and he was verbally abusive, then you're yeah. like, well, why would we believe that when we know that for seven years you lied about this yeah. this fake marriage and you lied about all this other stuff? So why yeah. would we believe you now? Yeah. I remember you, you I remember what, one time when they were together. Yeah. And... Uh, we were, we were, I don't know if we were getting ready for a show or whatever, and he came in and he was like, hey, how's it going? Uh, you know, what, I think it was after the show, actually. What did you do? Uh, how was your, and she said, how was your day, dear? And she goes, oh, he goes, oh, I made $3 billion today. How about you? And she goes, oh, I, I sang in front of 3 billion queens today, you know. And they kind of chuckled. Yeah. Oh, how cute. That was it, you know. <laughs> so it was a little bit. Was it a little a bit little, sweet or a little bit com- one upping almost, each other? It, it kind a of almost bit... felt a little competitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds like that yeah. a little bit. Yeah, interesting. Um, this is great, as you know that they played a video of her at the very stuffy lawyer party. You know about this night, the Christmas party, Mm-mm. or there, there was always a Christmas party that was very fancy that he would have like reindeers flown in. And like a Kardashian Christmas party right, before right, the right. Kardashians had it. Leanne Rimes performed at one of right. those. But also there was this thing that the L.A. Times talked about, that there was an actual like like top of L.A. lawyers, judges, legal thing that he hosted. And then was like, well, for the treat, I'm going to play a music video <laughs> of my wife, Erica Chains. And my friend who's um, has a brother-in-law who's uh, a judge was like, yeah. He was there. It was what fucking video weird. did they play? That we don't. I think they think it's this one, but I'm not sure. There's a photo of her here. Huh. I don't know, but it was you know all of her videos are very sexual, very you know pat the puss and that kind mm-hmm. of thing. So I mean, it wasn't like Celine Dion's music video right, right. playing for the stuffy lawyers. Well, and I think it was this. Like an I think moment, this one. Didn't care. This one. What was this one called? What was this? Video? I don't know which one. This was the first one. Bustier. I forget what it's called. But. Uh, yeah. It wasn't that. I didn't think it was. I think she's much more raunchier now than she was back then. 
Yes, I think so. And the zero fucks and the money and the, the yeah. And it's like, oh my god, yeah, zero fucks. You didn't care what you were spending because it wasn't your money. You weren't making it. <laughs> right. Of course, you gave zero fucks. It never stopped. Yeah, it wasn't like oh, you could only spend ten thousand dollars today. Yeah. It was like no, you could spend whatever you want. Yeah. This was also interesting. In but I think I think a lot of that verbiage and messaging is Mikey. To come up with this like character and persona, and and that that kind of you know. Uh, I'm expensive and I don't give I don't care I give I give zero fucks. I feel like that's his verbiage. You know, like you know, spending time with her, she she wasn't like that. You know, and I have a lot I've worked with a lot of clients who are that persona. They're if they're boisterous and they're ob obnoxious, they're they're like that all the time. Well, she's she can not, always say she's that not she, like that. That she had an alter ego. She was Erica Girardi, and, I think and it, she was Erica right. Jane. Which is, so, I think, it was. Yeah. It was. It's a lot of that verbiage and a lot of that those one-liners and stuff. I think that's Mikey. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's her. You know. I think she's. She. A lot of her persona is sort of like, if my Mikey was a woman, it's Erica Jane. Mm. But I will say. She, so someone put together some clips of the last five years of her being on the show, and she can be vicious bully. Like, compared to other housewives, she is up there with, like, mm -hmm. Teresa, I think, in, like, ironically, mm -hmm. someone else who was convicted. Right. Um, but, you know, screamed, you know, like, we get gets vicious. We're going to mm -hmm. see it, you know, this week yeah. of her getting vicious with Sutton and... Vicious with Eileen, vicious with uh, Dorit, really like mean, like right. scary. Yeah. Like, I'm going to fuck you up. Right. Like, <laughs> like, okay. I, I never but, I mean, saw fuck, that. She side was of her. a stripper from New Jersey. Right. She I worked never saw at that, that Butta Bing right. like strip club. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I would think you, you, you have that gangster in yeah. you that doesn't really go away yeah. when you're, when you're, you, you basically, you're and a when stripper. When somebody threatens your, your, um, when you feel threatened by someone. Yeah. You know, your your Im whether it's your image or whatever the story you're tr you want people to to see of you. Yeah. You know, it's it can push some major buttons. You know. And I mean, a stri strippers are geniuses. I mean, they know exactly how to get a guy to give them money, right. and they learn that. And it's not like that's a skill. Yeah. That you forget. It's not algebra. Right. You know, you Plus, remember I mean, you know, how to do it. The forever. thing is, I've I've worked with enough housewives to know that when you're watching a scene, you have really no idea what really went on because of the way they. They edit it. And what happened you know, before. What happened yeah. before, yeah. during, and, you know. So I've seen I've seen the, the in-between. So it's you're seeing a show that has kind of been pieced together. Yeah. And so, you know, who knows what riled her up right. to kind of, exactly. like, you know what I'm saying? Not that I'm trying to. No, that's true. And that, that has come Justify out that kind of behavior. Season. But I'm just saying you yeah. never know what, what was done beforehand that they rile her up. And then now you're sitting next to Sutton. Action, and you know, you see this this altercation, right? You know, yeah. Uh, I think this season, I'm sure that the 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 producers have done everything they can to kind of set her up mm -hmm. to get to find the story or to get her, you know, what happened. Mm -hmm. And you know, she's she's protecting herself. That's right. what I see it. I I I, it's coming across nasty and uh, vicious, but I see a woman who's being protective of herself. Well, she's, you know? she's, it's all coming out. Yeah. It's all coming out. It will out come and, out. You know, it'll come so out. So this is kind of interesting. So now we have, you know, the American Express card and everything. And some people um, have brought this to the attention. This is from Bravo, Bravo, Ducking Bravo, who all these, all these um, uh, Instagram are, are great to follow. Okay. But anyway, they said, looks like she's a very bad tipper because... Um, she only she tipped a one dollar on a ten dollar Uber drive uh, drive ride. Um, the Postmates tips were less, more like a ten percent, not the fifteen twenty percent. I, I don't know that this is that important, but yeah, she's not great to Postmates or Uber. Really, it's about the Postmates. She's just really not great about the Postmates. <laughs> So anyway, if I ever get in trouble, Peter, can you make sure that we tip Postmates <laughs> a lot, yeah. okay, and Uber? Um, so anyway, uh, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so let's um, get into your, the rest of your career. Sorry, that was – is that your phone? Nope. Let's go. Okay, let's go okay. So, okay, so let's talk about – so you, you end it with Erica Jane. 
Yeah. Um, tell me some other crazy that you can share or the best moments, the most interesting stuff, because you've just worked with everybody. Hmm. What happened with Mariah Carey's wig? <laughs> um, you know, the, th the, th the thing about my career is I'm, I was, for some reason, I'm brought in at the beginning of, of a lot of artists' careers. You know, I'm brought in to kind of help kind of give them a look, set the tone, create the persona. You know, I think I, I, I did that with, you know, I was Christine Aguilera's first makeup artist. I was Mariah Carey's first makeup artist. And they've gone on to work with fabulous yeah. makeup people. But I was the one that, that PR and managers, they bring to me to help make their, their artists look like a star. You know, yeah. And when I worked with when I met Kim, I remember a conversation that her management was on the phone. They're like, you know, we want to. I met her through Paris, and I thought she was beautiful. And I thought, you know, I've said this before. I, I she's our generation's Raquel Welch. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we're talking about a shoot, she's like, oh yeah, talk to my people. We'll set it up. Blah blah blah. So I get on the phone with them, and this is kind of before the mother, her mother Chris, had taken over. Managing. The, the management. And so they were like, you know, we want her to be the, you know, nothing's too sexy, no cleavage. And if, I'm thinking about shooting her like, you know, Raquel Welch, broad panties, big hair, mod on, on makeup, kind of like how I did you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, 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 no sexy, none of that. We wanted, you know, we're thinking maybe a turtleneck and a great blazer. We want her, to, we're trying to position her and develop her into like the next Juliana Rancic. I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm a makeup artist who shoots. I'm not, maybe, you know, maybe you should get somebody else to do that. That's not what I want to do with her. I, I'm, you know, I want to just do beautiful, iconic, sexy pictures. Yes, sexy, but like Italian Vogue sexy, you know? And she's like, yeah, but she already had, you know, did the sex tape and this Playboy shoot. And I said, listen, her Playboy shoot is worse than her sex tape. Like, her, at least she's pretty in her sex tape. But the, the Playboy shoot was horrible, you know, with the pearls and everything. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do anything like that. I don't want to yeah. do cheesy. I want to do really iconic, beautiful, you know, stylish, sexy, you know, pictures. And then Kim says, you know, I agree with Troy. I want to do what Troy wants to do. And let's film it for the show. And so, you know, she was at her house, like literally weekly, glamming her. Uh, doing pictures, de it's developing that look, you know? Yeah. I was on the show a few times, and that's when I sort of saw the the flux of attention and, the you know, 200 emails of, from women all over the world. Some women would send me, like, pictures of them topless. You take all sorts of payment, wink, wink. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I would get, I would be at the grocery store, and I'd get, like, Twitter alerts following Troy Jensen at Roush right now. Like, it was crazy yeah like i've i've worked with every major movie star pop star whatever never had this type of of fame uh, or notoriety yeah, yeah of experiences you know right. so it was you know you know i never had a falling out with kim you know we we recently were, were ch chatting uh -huh. um she posted something on her page a throwback you know i don't really even push put throwbacks up her for her anymore yeah. i just you know it was a great time she was lovely. Her family's lovely. But it was just too crazy, you know? Yeah. It was too much for you. It was too much for me, yeah. Because and, you never wanted to be, like, yeah. in front of And, you know, camera. I was, you know, Kim would send me these, uh, these cease and assist letters from her attorney because my images kept showing up online. My unretouched galleries. Oh, unretouched. Of, and so she, of course, probably thought, what are you doing, you, you Post, you know, posting yeah. it like I was like, I swear it's not me. I don't know how this is happening. And of course, during the pandemic, I get this message from this kid who used to hang out with my old assistant. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he said, I remember when you guys used to work with the Kardashians. That was such a great time. And I remember, we were, you know, I don't want to mention his name. We'll just yeah. call him E.T. Um, I remember when <laughs> E.T. used to used to send me your. Yeah, used to send yeah. me your uh, your galleries. I still have them, and shows me a screen cap of her unretouched pictures. And I was like, so that "That's where it came from." Yeah. So yeah. then, were you like, I, I was you, pissed. I was you so like, pissed. better never put those out. Yeah. No, I mean, I told him. I said, "Please delete it, please," because yeah. he wasn't allowed. He wasn't supposed to do that. Yeah. And you know, actually, he's working with the Kardashians now. So, <laughs> however, you know, it's from my old agent. My old agent kept. Do you think kept, they know? Kept them. Well, they should now. Yeah. God. You know they. Uh, I think it's hard to be them because, you know, I 
I've told this story where I, I think I got in a little bit of trouble with them after I went to the wedding of her and Chris Humphreys. And it was announced they're getting divorced after 73 days. And immediately mm -hmm. people are like, it's fake. It's this. It's that. Mm -hmm. And like Us Weekly called me and I was like, no, I don't think I don't think it's fake. I think maybe she had doubts before, like mm -hmm. many brides went through with it. And she's 30 and she wants to be a mom and she knows this guy isn't it. So why mm -hmm. not end it sooner than later? Yeah. I thought totally like if they do read this, won't they love that? Like, I'm not saying it's fake. I'm not da da da. And then, like, through some other people, it was like, no, they don't like when you talk about them at all in the press because they perceive that as I'm using this friendship to get my name into Us Weekly. And yeah. then, even when you don't think it's going to be, like, you think you're on the red carpet or you're doing an interview. Yeah. And you think it's going to be about, like, I would think it's going to be about my latest book or something. Yeah. And then they'd be like, oh, and just one more thing. Are you still friends with, you know, are you still friends with Kris Jenner? What do mm -hmm. you think about Caitlyn? You know, and you're like, <laughs> so you're like, say a little something. And then it's yeah. like, the like, Kris Jenner's best friend bashes Caitlyn. That right. happened to me. Yeah. And that was like right after Caitlyn um, was announced that she was transitioning. And I was like, oh, my God, that's totally not what I said. And then when you read the whole article and the direct quotes, nothing was negative. It was positive towards both of them. Mm. I was like, why is why are people now bashing Chris yeah. as a wife of 20 years? Like, if we're supporting women, let's support all women, yeah. you know? And But that was the, the grab. And I, after that, yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. No, I won't. I literally won't talk about them. And now I go into interviews and, you know, yeah. and I'll be like, just... I've got no in it. now. Now it's like I'm just reporting on what I see, but it's like it's hard because yeah. you think you're like being a supportive person, and then it's like it's it's. And I think it's so tricky for them yeah. with the amount of people that work. And then there's yeah. a stylist that like steals from one sister, but the other sister's like, well, I still really like the way she <laughs> <laughs> she styles me. Yeah. Like I still want to keep her. And the other one's like, but she's a thief. And it's like, well. Yeah. She didn't steal from me. You yeah. know, like, it's hard. It's hard, all, everything they have to manage, you know? Yeah. But they do come back to people, too. Yeah. They do, like, break up with someone and then bring them back. And yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, you know, there was a time where, I, th you know, I've been, I've had a really bad experiences with agents in this town. Yeah. So it's, I don't think it's something I'll ever go back to again I have agents representing you right yeah, yeah. I, have, I have Jarek is the best representation I've basically known him since he was 18 years old and raised him to be the best manager and production yeah. <laughs> uh, producer I've ever had in my life but um, there was a time when I was like looking for representation again and the first question they would ask me is like you know I've worked with every A-lister you can think of and they're more concerned of like oh you think you can get back in with Kim Kardashian I was like no no I can't so what? So what does that mean? Oh, well, you know, let us know if you get back in with them. I'm like, okay, cool. Fine. Bye. Yeah, because because we want to know that if you get with them, all the work's going to come to you and I can just sit back and collect the check. Right. Well, if I'm working with the Kim yeah. Kardashians and the whole family, I'm going to be busy every day. Yeah. That's why we want you working with them. We don't want to find you new people or new <laughs> right. work or get yeah. you on a commercial. They're right. so lazy. Yeah. That's what it is. And also, too, they, you know, they would they would deflect my clients onto the other other artists, you know. Yes. You know, like, oh, come I in. Had... And, you know, I was like, we need another artist like you who, you know, when this girl, when this other celebrity makeup artist is busy, you could do her clients. And so th there's a situation where this one celebrity makeup artist um, – got the cover of Harper's Bazaar. And so did they give it to me? She couldn't do it because she was booked. They, did they give it to me? No. They gave it to her assistant who had, didn't have a portfolio, never done anything. She was like, are you kidding? I'm not going to give my client to Troy Jensen. Are you kidding? Right. Over my dead body. Right, because they might like you better. Right. And then, yeah. So, you know, it's not like makeup artists are, you know, I, are not like influencers. We, you know, we don't need to cross promote each other. You know, it's sort of it's very competitive, you know, well, I think and the there's a very small group that can demand the high rates, you know, like when I did it, when I was doing like Oscars nominees and stuff, I could get I could write my own check. Now, you know, it's like, will you work for Instagram posts or, you know? Yeah. I also think the thing about makeup artists that are so important mm -hmm. Um, of what makes a great one. Yes, I like the way you do my smoky eye. Yes, you yeah. know. But it's also, 
you know, you guys have to have great personalities. You're in the person's, and I've said yeah. this before. Like, Well, what was it like working with me? Oh, my God. Great, obviously. <laughs> and fun and juicy. First of all, you got to be interesting. It's true. It's like yeah. I had a makeup artist at Chelsea Lately the whole time, and I absolutely adored her. And she was a mom, and I'd run my jokes. I wouldn't. I never had a producer producing me when I was on the show. Yeah. Like the other producers would go to the comedians that weren't writers. Right. They never came to me. I would just run my jokes past her, and she'd be like, "Eh, that wasn't that good." And I was like, "Oh, you realize you're like actually my producer that's doing my hair and makeup." Like, <laughs> so I think when people find someone that yeah. you know that is cool to travel with, that you yeah. know likes to eat what they like to eat, and some hang makeup out. artists just get, you know. Some some artists just get a certain someone's face. You know, there's yes. a lot of really talented people, but some people they just get get you. You know, it's all about that. Those you know, it's not about can you do makeup, but it's those yeah those choices that you make with a certain client and just how everything kind of comes together. You know, but also it's like but it's why I started shooting because yeah. you know I. Uh, I was already kind of, I was that guy that people would say, what are we doing today, Troy? And I would bring books and tear sheets, and whatever. And it's like, this is what I was thinking we'd do. And I'd help set up the lights. I, you know, I was sort of that guy, you know. Mm -hmm. Now I would not dream of doing that. I find that would be very intrusive and disrespectful, you know, unless it's my set. Right. So it's why I, you know, I have tron, done shoots where I brought in a hairdresser and they do their own thing. They don't like, well, here's the idea. And they go off and do something else. It's like, you know what? I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it all myself. And I've become this kind of one stop shop. So I've worked with obviously developing personalities, celebrities from pop stars, actresses, models, uh, hosts, whatever. But also working with brands, you know, creating content and stuff. For yeah. them. So a lot of like what I shoot isn't even my content to post, you know, yeah. like like your shoot was for your for press and for your promotions and stuff. It wasn't really my my stuff to shoot. Like people was like, when are you going to post he your shoot with Heather? I'm like, well, I'm waiting for her to post her stuff. You know, yeah. she has to do her her mock ups and her promos and stuff. That's what the shoot was for. Yeah, and it's not my content to shoot, really, to post. And you can so, post it all. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, anybody that gets it more, the more, the better. I loved it. I mean, it was great. And it was so much fun. I love that you. Um, oh, I want to say one thing. Um, what do you think about some of the makeup artists and the people that are around the Kardashians that then become the Kardashians? Have you seen that one male <laughs> makeup artist that's Kylie's? Mm -hmm. who has now a... Makeup by Ariel. Um, Very a, talented kid. Okay. But, you know, I, I've but never... But you know he has, like, a, a, a her ass right. has, has the So maybe he's transitioning. Waist. He might be transitioning. Into her. <laughs> into her, into Kylie, maybe. Yeah. It's kind you of creepy. Like, I would think as the star, know, I think that'd be thing. a little creepy. If all of this a sudden you started wearing hair like me and... <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know, Heather. I think it's a little weird, but, uh, okay. You know... I think that the Kardashians, when Kim's fame is resp is responsible for her other sisters to develop themselves. Yeah. For uh, her stepfather to come out yeah. and transition. It's very powerful. Like I said, you know, like I saw a lot of the negative sides of it. You know, I'm sure they do too with yeah. soccer's and crazy people. You know, I remember being in Vegas with Kim and Chris and we're going through a crowd of people and this was at the beginning when I first started working with her, and people were like slut, whore, blah, blah, and they weren't phased. Like she, I was like, oh my god, you know, like I was felt so protective of her, and so mortified that people were like this. Like I was constantly fighting with people on Instagram, and Kim was like, don't answer it. It's okay. It's fine. You know, I, I don't, I, it doesn't bother me anymore. You know, and I was like, it, some people were like like death threats. You know, like. Well, I would get crazy people like that thought that they were married to Kim and they were like, you're shooting my wife. I'm going to kill you. I'll find you. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I was like, it was I, crazy. I, I've always said that. I've always been like, they learned the blinders before anybody knew yeah. how to have the blinders. And I think like Hollywood Unlocked or something just wrote like, I love that, you know, Kim supposedly is getting dragged today over the Donda stuff with Kanye. I don't even know. And they're like. Kim never gives a shit. She's like, hey, guys, skim sales today. Like, it's so true. Like, she never – Chloe sometimes gets upset yeah. and will lash out yeah. on social media against the people that are dragging her and coming for her. But I feel like Kim is the queen of just being like – Keeping her eye on yeah, the Yeah, you don't, you don't like me today? 
by Thursday you will. So right. I'm okay with it. And yeah. what a great attitude to have. Yeah. How could you? That's why she is successful yeah. and a good mom because like. Yeah. You got into yeah. the minutiae of these. Well, you know, I, I, we had a conversation early on, where her the what they were doing with her was sort of de- building her as a sex symbol, and I remember a conversation. I said, you know, you need to be the poster child for a woman with curves, you know, and it. I thought she was the kind of classic beauty that that can transcend even race. You know, yeah. and so a lot of the shoots that I did with her one day, we did like kind of old Hollywood movie star, the next really fresh, then, you know, something a little bit more, you know, she loved JLo. So we would do like, J, you know, looks that I did yeah. on JLo on her, you know, so I try to, you know, show her diversity. Yeah. You know, she at the time was like, I love my face beat contoured to the, you know, to the nines. And I was like, you know, I think show your diversity, show on the red carpet, let's develop those looks on the red carpet to show that you are this classic beauty that you could, you are, you know, you have something for everyone, you know, right. for, you know, white, Arabic, uh, Latin, black, whatever, you know? And I think she kind of transcended yeah, that, you know? Yeah, definitely does, which is what makes it so fun. Because yeah. her face can be like... And I think after me, it's when she sort of got a, a stronger sense of what that she wanted to cre- to create and to develop. And so I think the makeup artists probably, you know, are, fall into line over of her vision of what she wants to do mm-hmm. as well as what her sisters want to do for their individual brands, you know, yeah. and image. Yes. With me at the time I was it was I I wasn't as open to listen to like her ideas. Like she was like, "Troy, I have ideas too." And I'm like, "Nah, we're not doing that. We're going to do this." <laughs> what would be one of her ideas that you were like, mm. I, I remember I you know. told me that you got annoyed with the uh, Her- Hervé Leger or the, oh, or yeah, the yeah. free no, dresses. The Hervé Leger dress. I said, yeah. we, you know, we, we got to, we got to, you got, we got to do something else other than the banded dresses. And she's like, well, you know, no, no brands were giving her anything. They weren't gifting yeah. her anything. Right. You know, she, you know, she, they, nobody, it's not like she is now, you know, it was really tough to get clothes. Yeah. Plus her, her figure, you know, she right. wasn't a sample size. Right. So I was like, you know. Get let's get a stylist and get styled properly, you know. Yeah. Let's let's hire someone, you know. So we started to work. Like I did this her first perfume shoot. Oh. Ah! Yeah, we did her. I did her first perfume shoot. Got dust on and it. And I, I don't, I don't know. It, it wasn't the finished. Yeah. What ended up? I, she ended up doing probably a few different shoots. What ended up coming out was not my shoot, but. Um, and you have Pat the Puss, so that's Pat the Puss. Yeah. Erica Jane. You know, they, Pussy powder. Uh, Too Faced is, uh, I'm on their PR list and I never got any uh, Erica Jane products from them. So I wonder if I. I think you're on the, sh- I think you're on the Send PR. Send it to everyone but Troy. I think you're, but you might've been on the PR list and the shit list. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I never got any, and they send me everything, you know? Yeah. And I never got any uh, Pat the Puss powder. It's just saying, you know? I got Pat the Puss. I got some eyeshadows. I mean, it was fun, you know? But yeah. we, I also know those things don't make a lot of money. I'm sure whatever money it did went to, you know, hiring the makeup artist to yeah. show up at, the, up at the store. And, you know, she's a brand, too. And a lot of brands uh, partner with other brands 50-50. Like, I'll, I'll provide this, you provide that. And they partner with them. Yeah. So it could have been a partnership. I don't know. I don't know what that what the deal was or how it did, but I never got any of it. So what is your prediction for Erica Jane, Mikey, the housewives? There's no My ar- prediction. wrong answers. It's just a My prediction. prediction. I think that she is going to go through a rough time. People are coming for her and they're going to, they're going to find out somehow that she is going to have to be responsible to pay back some of the money. She'll have to pay back some. And then she is, you know, with our world the way it is now, she'll be able to build like she's that gorgeous, hot woman that uh, th- that a man will basically sacrifice his whole lifetime career to pay for her to make her happy, you know. And so, like, yeah, and that's like that'll be her Cle- brand, like almost like the Cleopatra of our time, right. or like almost yeah. like a Bible story, like, yeah. like, uh, like. A thousand years from now, they'd be right. like, they once was a beautiful waitress working at Chasen's. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have anything. Just a single mom, former stripper, wanted yeah. to be on a TV show. In walked the biggest attorney in the world. Made her the biggest pop star. It was the scandal of all scandals. 
Is and that Erica? I was the no, center of it. No, these are all Erica's oh, okay. looks. See, I'm like you. I came up with, no, these were all real looks that I copied of hers. Okay, those are um, amazing. Tits out. Yeah. And uh, this one really looks like her. Yeah. And yes. So I, I think so that I think she'll. I think she'll. And yeah, I, she'll I be able she, to. I think in the, the end she'll be able to spin. The man destroyed his life to, to yeah. for the love for this woman. That pussy. Yeah. That yeah. pussy was he so took, worth he, padding. Yeah, he took. That, he took. He sold money from victims. And you know, after I worked with you, you told me to watch the de documentary. So I was even. I wasn't even aware of really what the. The it story was, Troy, you know, Troy, er, but it's it, Dorit here. It we, wasn't yes, just we care. victims. It was widows Children. and orphans, mind you, burn victims. I mean, it's really, uh, it's disturbing. So. But don't you think those other girls on the show, they wish they were her too, probably. In some way, I think they all feel like they're I, trying I also, to like. I also want to say like this to, like, was shot five months ago. They don't have the knowledge that yeah. I have that I just yeah. shared with you. That so imagine that, she can so, imagine yeah. this thing spins and she becomes like you know like look with the Kardashians they you know they took a you know a scandal they tw they tw they they flipped made lemonade, it baby they made lemonade Get I the think I think out. she'll be able to do the same you know I don't think she's gonna go away and I think she'll definitely be on back next season. Um, the, the if she goes next season, will that salary, which by that time they average based on how many years she's been on, it could be like seven fifty, eight hundred thousand a year, will it in fact be garnished mm. to give to the victims? And I can't imagine that a she'd want to give it up, and yeah. b why they don't the cast members aren't going to want to get rid of her. Well, she probably thinks you know she, I made, I worked for that money. Yeah, and I mean, and <laughs> why do I, I have to give it up? And I want to see. I want to see what next year brings. Uh, they, well, you're really close with this. You you have well, a lot of yeah. more insight with this case. What's your prediction? What I you mean, think? I definitely don't think she. I definitely think she's going to do the reunion. 100. percent She's going to come back next year. The question is, will some of the salary be garnished? If so, how much? But no, I mean that's an interesting story. How you come back from it? Who do you date? Do you still now that this charade of this dumb dancing and singing? She can't obviously get up there and be like, it's bankrupt to be me. <laughs> e, e, e. I mean, that's not going to happen. So the singing is done. I don't Maybe. Think, maybe not. I do. I, I don't think the gays are going to be coming cheering I don't, for I, her, knowing could, what they know. I don't. I disagree. Okay. That's I, where we disagree. I feel, like she, I feel like she loves it so much, she's going to find a way to come back. Okay. You know? I think the singing crap is over. It's too expensive to do. I don't think people are going to buy tickets for it. But I think she will continue to be... A celebrity personality house. Well, did type people of buy Tardy for the party? Don't be Tardy for the party. <laughs> did people buy that? La, la, la. No, but I'm saying, I, and I don't know if, and I think her little conscious that she did on the show, Kim Zolziak, I don't think people paid to see those either. I think they were pride events too. Right. I, I saw any, her at a pride event. Does anyone even pay to go to I had pride? A pri <laughs> I saw her at a pride event in New York and, um, Andy Cohen was there and introduced her and introduced her and then told her afterwards to take her wig off. Like, take your wig off, take your wig off. In front of the crowd? Did she do it, George? I think she did. That's kind of rude. In the front of the crowd? I don't remember. Yeah. Jeez. Troy, I love you. And Thank listen, you. Troy is... I thought it was on here to do a smoky eye or do some tutorial I know. with you. Um, well, listen, I want to tell people that you're based in L.A. Yes. And... You don't just work with celebrities. Someone can have the Troy yeah. Jensen yeah. I, I, incredible I, experience yeah. with all these different looks. I can't believe how many looks we've got done in a day. If you can afford me. Yes. If you can afford him. <laughs> um, honestly, listen, I think it's a really, really great, cool thing to do. Um, if you're coming to L.A. And let's bring her and back. Yeah. If you're coming to L.A. and you want to have just that experience, you want to feel and you want to have the best of the best work on you. It is worth it. It is worth it to do 100%, not only for the experience, but these are photos that you can't get anywhere yeah. else. It's an L.A. experience. So come to L.A., work with Troy, get your drinks at the Waldorf, go eat dinner at Craig's, go by the pool at the Beverly Hills Hotel, eat at the Polo Lounge, um, go to Nobu, skip Disneyland. These are the things that you do when you're a Juicy Scoop right. woman. You, this is this is the LA trip. Yeah. So, everybody follow Troy Jensen. That's right on it's, Instagram. It's Troy Jensen. Oh, it's Troy Jensen I on Troy on Jensen. Instagram. And then what's your website? Uh, TroyJensen.com. Great, love yeah. you. Thank love you. you.
Well, guys, I'm getting on a plane in a couple days to see you in Seattle. That's right, Seattle. I will be at the Triple Door September 10th and September 11th. Second show on September 11th, Saturday. Still has some great seats left. So make sure you go to heathermcdonald.net. See Justin Martindale and I there. And for all of my dates, heathermcdonald.net.